Hey everyone, this is Chris, and you're listening to slash watching One Cross Radio, and today we are Gene... Gene? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh boy. Today we are joined by nobody, except for a very tired Chris, who did not get a lot of sleep last night, and said Gene instead of joined. Uh, and today we are talking about a couple different things. Um, so, it's been a while since I've done the solo uh, vlog, I guess vlog, a vlogcast, I don't know what you call video podcasts, um, and solo audio podcast. Um, the last episode we had was with the always awesome Steve, and we were looking at Captain Marvel, and Captain Marvel was what Captain Marvel was. Um, but today just wanted to talk about a couple different things. So the first being is new schedule. Um, and dear listener slash viewer, or I guess more so dear viewer than listener, because uh, listeners you can't see. But dear viewers, if you see me looking down to the right or whatever, it's because all my notes are on my phone so I can stay track, stay on track and try not to ramble uh, too much because I, I do that. And it's almost inescapable. But uh, it, it will happen, but I've got notes to try to stay on track. Um, so the uh, the first thing I want to mention is our new schedule. What I'm going to be aiming for is about two episodes a month. Uh, I've recently up to full time hours at my at my job, and it is wonderful. But like I said, when I when this first happened, uh, it takes up a lot of the time. And then I also do have another job on the side, which is wonderful. And no way complaining. Praise God. Thank you for these hours. Um, <coughs> um, it's just a lot of the time that I used to be able to schedule for stuff is now kind of away. And uh, other friends and certain guests who have uh, who are frequent guests are busy or uh, are having children soon. <laughs> so it's... We're, we're going to be aiming for uh, twice a month. And what's kind of been interesting is as we've been slowing down, I'm seeing that we're growing. Uh, the audio on the podcast, I'm looking at Podbean. I check the I check the website, uh, the, the page every couple of days, and the downloads are still growing even as there's less activity, which is interesting to me. It's kind of awesome. Uh, so thank you. Thank you guys so much for all your support. And I'll be trying to get to you uh, new content every every two weeks. Um, also want to give a particular special shout out and thank you to Redeemed Otaku, who uh, I subtly shouted out, just didn't tag them in it, a couple weeks ago when I did the Let's Talk About Godzilla podcast. Um, they did a paid share, which is awesome. Uh, they I, When I shout people out, I'm in no way expecting a return shout out. It's just because I like them. I like what they do. I, I believe in what they're doing. I support them and I enjoy it. So I'm, I'm always going to shout out people's stuff like Cardboard Koinonia. Y'all are awesome. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and Hector Mirror's Faith and Fandom and Love Thy Nerd and all these things. I love these these podcasts, these resources, these ministries, these people, um, some of whom I know much better than others. Um, I love what they do. So I'm not shouting out to get recognition or get shouted out back, but Redeem Otaku did. So thank you. Thank you so much for that. So dear listener, as I said in the Godzilla podcast, you should really check them out. Um, I listen to them on two places. You can probably find them at a couple more. But if you're if iTunes is the easiest place, but if you don't have iTunes or you just don't want to, uh, you can check them out at redeemedotaku.lisbon.com. Great podcast, lot of infectious laughter. They're very fun, uh, but they they look at things uh, anime from a Christian perspective, and they dive deep into it, uh, which is awesome, deeper than I do, um, which is really, really cool. Um, so check them out. Thank you guys for the shout out. Uh, so the other thing I kind of want to, before I get to that, uh, viewer, you'll notice that I'm rocking a awesome uh, Bucky Barnes uh, Captain America outfit. It is a hoodie that I got from HeroWares.com. Not a sponsor, just love their products. Uh, they, I also got a great uh, I almost said Ben Riley, but great Kane Parker Scarlet, Scarlet Spider hoodie. Man, there's so many great hoodies on there and shirts that I I would 
not have any money. So I got to pace myself like with comics and stuff. Uh, so if you're looking for some good wearable merch, check out herewares.com. Again, not a sponsor, although herewares, if you're listening and you'd like to be, let, let's chat. Let's work something out. That'd be great. <laughs> uh, so the one of the main things I wanted to talk about is around the time Captain Marvel came out, um, things kind of came to a head. It seems that whenever there's a big... Sorry, I thought Luna was coming in, and she might be. Um, yeah, it's weird. The door's opening. Just random noise. Oh, yes, there is a puppy. Uh, hi, Loons. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, listener and viewer. Um, whenever there's a big uh, female-led superhero movie, or even female-led movie, they're uh, there always seems to be this headache that comes with it. Uh, that's it's through no fault of the movies themselves. Um, it's either through the studios and the media pushing something or people reacting to overreacting to something that's not actually being pushed. With Captain Marvel, Brie Larson just said, hey, it'd be great to have more diversity um, with reviews, at, uh, like with movie reviewers, as the majority of them are male, the majority of them are white male. And yeah, sure, you could get into the demographics of people and all that, but we're not going to do that. In and of itself, that statement is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Having more female reviewers is great. Having more reviewers of color is great. Having more reviewers of, insert any demographic, there's nothing wrong with that. Because uh, certain stories are going to resonate with other people more than they will other groups of people um and there's there, there's nothing inherently wrong with that so but people took that as oh she's against white dudes so the internet as it does lost its collective mind um or let me rephrase that the popular phrase is a vocal minority uh which is accurate just a very loud annoying vocal minority uh lost its mind and proceeded to review bomb captain marvel which was dumb uh, before the flick even came out. Now, I know some people were like, oh, they did this with Ghostbusters. In, in the case of Ghostbusters, a lot of people were saying like, no, this looks bad. I have a cousin, Pete, uh, who designed our logo. Great guy. He's got a website. I'm going to attach it in the description. Go check him out. Um, I was talking to him around the time of Ghostbusters, and he was like, whenever I'm mentioning I don't like it, people jump to the, oh, you're sexist. And for him, he's like, it's not because I'm sexist. I love women. I love female-led things. Um, it's because it looks like crap. Now, I haven't seen Ghostbusters. It looked bad. Not through the fault of the cast. It just looked like a bad movie. And for the most part, everything I've heard about it is Ghostbusters bad. Um, Ocean's 8 had, unfortunately, a similar experience where I dug the flick. Um like, women make up 50% of the population, so I don't see anything wrong with there being more women-led movies. Uh, it was, Ocean's 8 was a fun heist movie. Its selling point wasn't that, oh, it's women this time. Now, like I said, I've said in the past, I only have internet, I don't have cable, uh, I don't see a lot of ads, so maybe the marketing did something different with that, but it, to me it was like, look, it's a heist movie with eight women. We've had three movies with a like 90% male cast. Um, it was fine. It was a fun heist flick. Like I, I don't see the issue with more representation. Now, apparently some people do, but the thing that I didn't like that happened around the time of Captain Marvel was Rotten Tomatoes, in a right way, uh, tried to curb the review bombings before the flick even happened. Uh, Captain Marvel just seemed to be this huge thing of controversy, and it, it just couldn't be a movie. Uh, and the movie was what it was. But it got targeted well before, and either praised, like before, like, we have to make this movie amazing, we have to make it the, the biggest thing, we have to do this, or what seemed to be more like we have to bomb this movie. We need to make sure it goes down and we send a message and all that. And it's, it, that's dumb. Uh, I don't, I just don't get that logic. Let, let the movie come out. Hopefully it'll be a great one. Um, yeah. And so I get why Rotten Tomatoes did that thing with the audience scores, because people were deliberately trying to make the flick like bomb. 
which is just dumb to me. If you don't like something, don't watch it. Uh, it, it makes no sense to me, and it's it's been that way for a while. Where for the most part, if you're if you're against something, like and you publicly protest it or publicly try to start a campaign against it, you're drawing more eyes to it. Uh, I remember with the Kevin Smith flick Dogma um, at the time, like the Catholic Church was hardcore out against it, and it seemed to draw more eyes to it. Or the Golden Compass, which has a very anti-Christian, anti-Catholic message it, intentionally. I can't speak to the film, but the author in his books, that was a deliberate thing. Um, but so many people protested it that that's how I heard about it. I would have never heard about it if I didn't see anything on the local news being like, we have to stop this. This is this is egregious. We have to do this. Now, I've got no problem people protesting. You have the right to protest. Please do. But at the same point, sometimes how you protest or how much of a fervor you stir up, you're not necessarily putting eyes on your side. You're just putting eyes on the product. You're making people wonder, like, what is the hubbubaloo for a term that I think I've never used? Um, like, what what's all the ruckus? Like, I'm, I'm curious now. Uh, yeah, I, I just don't, I don't get that mentality. If I don't want to see something, I don't watch it. If people ask, I'll be like, here's here's X, Y, and Z, or I'll talk about it on the podcast, but I'm not going to go out of my way to go to a theater and be like, you shouldn't play this, or yell at people for going to see a flick, or yell at people online. Like, civil discourse should be a thing. Uh, I disagree with this for X, Y, and Z. But back to the topic, because, see, I ramble. Um Rotten Tomatoes doing that to curb the attemptive review by bombings made sense. YouTube uh, did something with their algorithm, and this is something I don't like. I get I get the logic behind it, but I don't like the outcome. Uh, they around the release date of Captain Marvel, they redid their algorithm so when you search Captain Marvel, you wouldn't just come up with a bunch of negative videos against the movie. Instead, it would just point to positive stuff. Now, I, I, again, I get the logic because you're not trying to negative, like YouTube as a company, probably not trying to negatively influence anything. But the issue I have with that is it takes people's voice away. Now, YouTube, unlike society at large, is a, uh, it's not a government run thing. CEOs run it. It's you sign up, when you sign up, you sign up to the company. They, ha they do have a right to be like, look, we disagree with these views and we're not going to promote them. And that's fine. It's just still something I don't like. Um, I'm new to YouTube in a sense of actually putting stuff on here. Now, my channel's crazy small. Uh, dear listeners, you are awesome and listening to the podcast, which is great. It's not translating to viewers, and that's okay. I am in no way complaining. Um, but it's, it is, it's tricky and it's weird to me. Because I don't like the idea of doing something which silences someone else, even if that's someone I disagree with. Now, if it's people publicly being in their videos or whatever, being like, we should, like, encouraging and actively endorsing violence towards people, then yes. Then then that I don't, if I was running YouTube, I'd be like, nope, that's not up. Uh, but if it's... Uh, or a comment on my videos, which never get any comments, um, unless it's the Mighty Ducks one I posted years ago. Um, but if it's a video just being like, I don't like this for X, Y, and Z, and then it could be someone coming from an agenda. It could be someone coming from a different understanding or not. I like the idea of there being the balance on YouTube, because even though it is a private place, it is something people go to for a lot of public information. Heck, YouTube is a place that you can get Young Turks or Rebel Media, not endorsing either one of those, but you get what I mean. You can get a lot of views from one side or another here. It's it's still a, it's, it's a public place. So I just, I don't like the idea of doing algorithms that really can knit, like silence one side and only paint one picture. Captain Marvel was what it was. There are, are people who loved the movie, and that's awesome. I wasn't one of them. Uh, I don't think that me or anyone saying, I don't like this, should be grouped in with the, the extreme people being like, we should kill this movie or violently attack Brie Larson or Marvel, which is 
a horrendous idea and violence against anything like that is stupid and should be blocked. I'm going on a rant. I hope I'm making sense. Um, if I could just encourage, it's like listener, viewer, and other people who review movies and talk about nerd stuff, like let's do it well. If it makes you upset, acknowledge that it makes you upset, own it. Talk about why it makes you upset, but we shouldn't get to the place where we're like, let's ruin something. We can say, like, we think this ruins something, but ne let's not try to target people, target individuals. Doxing and anything is just ridiculous and dumb. So let's 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 get better. Uh, yeah, I, I hope that part made sense. So kind of back to, I guess, back to the larger topic. Um, I want more more female-led stuff. Now, that's not to say I want more less male-led stuff, because um, a lot of my favorite characters just happen to be male, but there's a lot of great female-led stuff, or potential for great female-led stuff. Um, my one request, as with anything, is, is do it well. Uh, for example, like, uh, the most recent Star Wars trilogy has not been that great. Now, that's through no fault of the actors and actresses. Um, a lot of people have issues with Ray. I'm I'm one of them. It's, it's I like the character on on paper, um, and I love Daisy Ridley. I, I love her performer. She's she's great in the role. She looks awesome on the screen, but I just find the writing underserves her. And I would so many people, myself included, would enjoy her more if there was just more written about her and more written for her, and things didn't come as easy to her. Um, as they do, where it's just like, okay, she's she's just amazing at everything through through not showing much struggle. I'd love to see that struggle. Uh, that that's a case that happens in in comics and and movies, and it happens with male characters as well. And I like it less. But as we're as there's now a good deliberate push to try to have more female led characters, which again is inherently not wrong. Uh, trying to have more female-led movies is a great thing but i'd say is as everybody's in this roar of like getting to the point where it's like well female movies are bad and we have to bomb them and that which is again stupid like let's make sure these let's let's make them good i want good movies i want more movies with female characters so i want the ones coming out to be good um i'd love to see a silk series i know steve disagrees but we, we talked about that on the recent episode that we did together, um, where we were looking at upcoming comic movies and stuff. Or Spider-Gwen, or the spinoff of Into the Spider-Verse that is going to be uh, all female. Or if you ever did, like, a female Avengers, A-Force, it's a comic, I haven't read it, but I've heard good things. Like, if you want to do more of that, then let's get it, let, let's do it well. Because if you do it well, if you write the characters well, then you're one going to see the vocal minority is more just against this than uh, because it's female led than actual legit criticisms. Uh, every, unfortunately a lot of, a lot pocket, a lot of pockets of the internet, man, I can't speak, get grouped in together where anybody who has legit criticisms against race, Ray, for example, from, the sequel trilogy gets grouped in with the vocal minority who is just like women bad, which is bogus. It's not true. Like you can have legit criticisms against Ray, against Rose, against Holdo, all three characters, not well written, uh, who could have been used substantially better. No problem with the actresses. It's just the writing of those characters in those movies was not as good. Um, they should like anybody who holds that position should not be grouped in with the person over here. Just like anybody who holds the position, uh, I'm not going to give any examples, I'm too tired, but you guys get what I mean. Um, if you do it well where, hey, if you see the writing for Ray or Captain Marvel or Ocean's 8 or whoever is really, really solid and they are well developed and you can't just, you, you don't give an room for criticism, which in cinema and writing, there almost always will be, but again, you get what I mean, uh, then that minority is going to be a lot smaller, and then people are going to be like, no, we can just ignore you because you are clearly just trolling. Um, I do believe if you do a good movie, a well-written movie with well-written characters, with journeys, for the most part, this will 
get people in. If a movie's bad or suffers from a number of things, including terrible writing, underdeveloped characters, like that flick will sink. It will bomb. There are a couple exceptions, but word of mouth will affect those movies. So I, I hope that makes sense. Um, I know I'm circling, so I'm going to move on. But yeah, I'd, li I'd like to see more female-led movies. I just want them to be good. Just like I want every every movie coming out based on stuff that I enjoy to be good. Men or women. But yeah. Uh, so the next thing, uh, we're going to go into another section. So there's a couple things that are going on that I want to talk to you guys about, which I'm excited about. So a couple weeks ago, I mentioned like, hey, part of the reason that we're slowing down is I'm going to be part of a new podcast. So at my work, we are actually uh, doing a podcast, um, which is exciting and fun. But part of it is we're also teaching kids how to do podcasts. Uh, when we mentioned it, that we were thinking of it, a bunch of the youth were like, oh my gosh, that's awesome. And then when we asked, like, would you like to learn how to do this? Because it is a it is relatively easy to do this for free um, or close to free. They were even more interested. So that's, that's exciting for me. I, I love this medium. It's a lot of fun, but also I enjoy, I enjoy editing weird as it is at times it drives me nuts, but it's, it's fun to do. So actually getting to do this with the youth is kind of cool and fun. Um, the other thing that I'm crazy excited about at work is at the end of April, so the first week of, last week of April slash first week of May, because it's one of those weeks, um, from the 29th to May 3rd, at my work, we are doing our Comic-Con event, which uh, I'm so excited for. Me and my, my buddy, Kyle, who runs the morning program, we've been working crazy hard for it. Um, we got funding uh, from, from some wonderful people at work to, on the Tuesday night, take 20 to 30 youth who are low income or homeless uh, to go see Avengers Endgame, which is crazy exciting. Um, what I love with that is, one, we're getting to go see the movie, which the youth have asked for, which is awesome. But to my line of work, which is wonderful and needed, so much of the time we're giving youth what, like, low income or homeless youth what they need. And we need to do that. That's an absolute necessity. If it was only ever once, then I'd have a problem with that. But so, many, so much of the times we're giving the needs and we get stuff for the needs, which is again, wonderful and no way complaining. But a desire we've had recently is to try to get some stuff where we can give them some wants. Uh, so it's not just the needs. It's again, a nice distraction from their situation to provide the to provide them with something where it's like, hey, you know what? I didn't need that, but that's kind of cool. I wouldn't have gotten that because of X, Y, and Z. So being able to take them to a movie is going to be awesome. Uh, that week we've got some great events uh, lined up, which I'm so excited for. Um, we're trying to get some good prizes. So I'm going to ask, dear listener, if you know any place. Um, be it online or even if you're local in Toronto or Hamilton, especially if there's shipping that could be done to Hamilton, uh, that's, that's good for donations for um, anything geeky, uh, mer uh, like anything geeky, be it clothes or toques or uh, Funko Pops or um, comics, games, what have you, anywhere that... Uh, is good for donations for that, please email us. Um, or if you'd like to financially contribute to that, not asking, just saying, if, if you're feeling led or you're feeling like it, please email me and we can uh, we can work something out. You can email us at uh, 2099 One Cross Street, uh, ST for the street at gmail.com. Uh, so it's three S's. So it's, uh, I'll repeat it again, just because that's who I am. Uh, 2099 O-N-E-C-R-O-S-S-S-T. The three S's threw me off. At gmail.com. <laughs> um, yeah, if you know any place, uh, let us know in the comments. Drop us an email. That would be wonderful. Thank you, guys. Um, what else? So the next couple things are... I've actually got some prayer requests, if that's okay. So the big one is Comic-Con coming up at work. Um, 
which is, uh, again, very excited, but there's a lot of work to get done. So if you could pray for energy, for myself, for Kyle, for the whole t breakfast, evening, and weekend team, and the team at The Rock, that would be wonderful. Um, I also ask for a prayer for general health uh, for myself, and uh, I guess and the team at work, but for me, it's like, if you've been hearing, my, my voice is a little thrown off. Uh, you've heard me sniffle a couple of times. I'm, I'm fighting a cold. I've been fighting it for a while. Uh, I just get sick really easily. So, and I can't miss any time. <laughs> uh, so please keep me in your prayers, uh, for general health. And if you have any prayer requests, drop them in the comments, drop an email. I'm happy to pray for you, please. Um, and then also a couple friends, I've got some friends who are, uh, are pregnant. Um, so please pray for, safe deliveries and safe terms and all that, that everything goes smoothly and that you're, that God will be with the husbands, with the wives as this is going on. Um, please pray for that because even though Jill and I have never been pregnant, I've had many friends and loved ones who have been and it's scary and there's a lot of stuff going on. So if you can, please keep them in your prayers and also play, please pray for a friend of mine. Um, who is lately, over the past uh, couple months or years or so, he's he has developed uh, a lot of anxiety, um, which is really throwing him off um, and, and messing with him, as it does, because anxiety sucks, and depression sucks, and God allows us to go through it, in no way questioning that, and it, it is manageable through him, but it still it messes with you. It, it It's not fun. Um, as I shared before, without going in, in, into any details, back in November and through January, uh, both of those things were flaring up hardcore for me. So I was really wanting to slow down on stuff. And the website took a hit because of it, um, which even still now I haven't, it's still there, just less uh, for me. So keep keep them in your prayers, um, as, especially as you work with people, it, it can mess with you. Um, so please pray for this person. I'm not naming names, um, but keep them in your prayers and ask, ask the Lord to be, to be with them. Uh, yeah. So the final thing, uh, this is going to be a shorter episode because I'm really trying not to ramble is I've got a couple, a couple plugs. Um, and I know I plugged Redeem Otaku at the top, but that was a special shout out, but I also did plug Cardboard Corninia, Love Thy Narrative, Faith and Fandom. So Reiterating those four again. Uh, so the other couple things I wanted to plug, and I'm going to quickly show you because I like the show and tell aspect. It helps keep me focused. Is uh, our dear friend, Pastor Hector Mire, uh, who is currently writing Faith and Fandom Volume 6, which I'm so excited for, um, had another book, which I really encourage you to check out, whether you're in ministry or not. But especially if you're in ministry, this will connect. Um, it's called... 10 Things I Learned from Stucking at Student Ministry. Uh, it is a fantastic short book. As I was reading it, it was reminding me so much of uh, some just experiences I've had in the past working at a church, working in ministry, even working in social work. But there were certain things that were just making me like legit guffaw and fall over laughing on the bus and also just making you sit and be like, man, I've done goofed in the, in the, in that good way. And that, in that little poking way, um, praise God for this. Uh, I say praise God for this book and books like it. Uh, cause it, it can show you what certain things to avoid or even make you remember certain things and remind you like to put more of the focus on the Lord instead of on yourself within your, within your ministry, whatever that ministry may be. So it's a really good book. You can find it on amazon.ca, amazon.com. Good price, great book. If you can, you should check it out. Uh, in terms of comics, there's a couple I'm going to share. Oh, this wasn't planned, but my Dash Rendar from Shadows of the Empire action figure just fell over. I got that from a local store a uh, couple months ago, or almost six months ago at this point. Time is weird. Um, and I, I don't regret it at all, because that Dash was one of the few toys I didn't get as a kid from Shadows. Anyway, I uh, just wanted to do a couple comics plugs. Um, I haven't been as up-to-date with comics recently, which sucks in some ways. Again, not complaining, just time. 
Uh, but one of the ones I would recommend is uh, this run on Darth Vader. Now, this is volume four from the... Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to read the author's name correctly. From Charles Soule and Giuseppe Kemencoli. Sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Uh, this is the second solo Darth Vader run from Marvel's uh, Star Wars comics. Um, the first run was amazing. So when I heard about the second run, I was really curious as to how it was going to turn out. Because the first one took place five minutes after A New Hope. And probably ended like a week or two before uh, Empire Strikes Back. So it was a nice tight time period. This one takes place like five minutes after Revenge of the Sith and picks up from there. So it's redone some stuff from the EU in the new continuity, but it's really great. It's the writing strong. Vader's awesome. Uh, if I haven't read many of the other Star Wars comics, so this one I would definitely, definitely recommend. Uh, the other one I can plug by showing is Power Rangers Soul of the Dragon. IDW, sorry, not IDW. Wow, no, I was thinking Ninja Turtles there. Um, Boom Studios Power Rangers uh, has been an excellent run. Now, I haven't read since the, uh, the Shattered Grid event, so I... I'm not up to date. I read up to the end of that, and then I just I haven't been able to pick it back up. Um, not because it's bad or anything, just again time. But it's been a great run. Um, Kyle Higgins, who did that run, uh, like really made Rangers awesome and acceptable, be it for lifelong fans or people who haven't seen it since a kid, since they were a kid, or anybody. It's accessible, and the great thing is that run. Uh, pulled in everything uh, Power Rangers. So even though it was mostly focused on the Mighty Morphin team, you got great glimpses of Zeo, Turbo, uh, <sighs> RPM, which is like my second favorite team, Jungle Fury, like everybody, everybody, even RP, uh, sorry, not RPM, RPM Rocks, Overdrive, Samurai, uh, Megaforce, which is next to nobody's favorite. Sorry, Mega Force. Uh, it, it embraced all things Ranger, especially in that Shattered Grid event, and updated it and made it still campy but serious, and the world worked. Uh, Higgins has left the title um, at the end of Shattered Grid, and then I, th I don't know if it was intentional as the swan song, but at the end, he did Soul of the Dragon, which is a old man Logan, old man Logan style story, but based on Tommy. Uh, and it takes place after Dino Thunder, and it just shows Tommy being older, trying to get used to not being a ranger, but it shows the Master Morpher, which we got in the uh, Dimensions, in it Dimensions in Danger 25th Anniversary episode of uh, Dino Charge. I think, is it Dino Charge, the current one? Or now... No, because now it's Beast Morphers. But the most recent series that had the anniversary episode, um, it showed the Master Morpher. It does show him morphing into all the different Rangers. Um, and it includes a lot of other Ranger stuff, especially SPD. It's a really good book. Um, definitely check that out. Again, whether you're a huge Power Rangers fan or a novice, the writing's solid, the story's good, and that whole Boom Studios run on Power Rangers has been excellent. You can definitely pick it up. Um, yeah, I think that's about it for, for, uh, comic plugs, um, and, and books. The other thing I would mention is, of course, uh, Jesus. <laughs> I, I always, I always want to plug Jesus. Um, the Lord is why I do this. Um, ultimately out of every episode, I'm hoping and praying that the Lord is being pointed to. I would not be who I am without Jesus Christ. I would not be saved. I might not, I would not be here. I might not even, I wouldn't possibly wouldn't even be alive to be frank. Um, so dear listener, I do hope and pray that you hear the Lord through these podcasts. And if you are, if you are a Christian, I hope that it's, it's helping you grow in some aspects, even when we just talk about comic books and Dear listener, if you're not a Christian, um, I do pray that you will seriously consider 
seeking out someone you can ask questions to and that you will that that you will find the lord or that the lord will find you um yeah god is amazing um seriously god is wonderful so on that note uh <laughs> which is a just kind of abrupt but that's the episode so uh dear listener thank you for listening and watching um i hope you enjoyed today's episode let me know in the comments again i'm um, if you and emails if you uh if you have any prayer requests if you know any places for the stuff for comic-con and let me know what you think of this episode and the solo format is there ways i can improve it if it's something you're digging i'm, I'm genuinely curious that be all that being said i hope you enjoyed hope you have a wonderful day and god bless my friends take care peace